From the Popcorn Talk Network, the number one online broadcast network for movie talk, this is Bolly What? The show where we break down all you need to know about Bollywood and its movies. Hey everyone, it's your host Kanika Lal for the Popcorn Talk's newest show, Bolly What? You can follow me on Twitter at Kanika Lal. And today we have a very, very special segment as I am in conversation with the director and writer Rajamat Kumar of the latest film on freedom, which has been stirring quite the controversy um, in India. But before we delve into that though, make sure to check out Popcorn Talk on YouTube, on iTunes, and on SoundCloud. And to join the conversation, to continue the conversation, um, make sure to use the hashtag Popcorn Talk, hashtag Bolly What? And Hashtag on freedom. Thank you so much, Amit. I'll call you Amit um, for joining today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And what a film that you made. I mean, I saw it last night and it was powerful. It was very, very bold. It had me on edge. There was not one scene where you weren't. It, it, I mean, it wasn't a light movie. You exposed the very brutal truth. But before we go into that, do you mind just telling the viewers and the listeners a little bit of a brief synopsis of the film so they get the understanding of it? <coughs> And Freedom has uh, two stories in it. One takes place in New York, mm -hmm. where there is a <clears throat> fundamentalist Muslim has come to kidnap uh, and kill a liberal Muslim scholar. Mm -hmm. So what happens between them is the story that takes place in New York. <clears throat> in New Delhi, um, there is a lesbian who is about to get married, mm -hmm. and she runs away with her lover. Um, and she is being chased by her cop father. So what happens between them is the story takes place in New Delhi. So these right. two parallel stories, through them I try to uh, deal with questions of religious intolerance, mm -hmm. uh, sexual unfreedom, uh, and violence in our society. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is a Bollywood panel, supposedly, but this film is not Bollywood now. But I think it's important to be more aware that there are a lot of films in South Asia that go beyond Bollywood. I mean, there's films that are made in South India. Um, there are films like yours that are more independent. Yet, I did see in the opening credits, though, that you thanked, that the film thanked Yashraj Films for yeah. kind of, what, yeah. what, what was the connection well, they, there? They, they Which is a Bollywood production house, by the way, Yashraj <clears throat> Films. How do you define Bollywood? Let's get into that. Let's, oh God, let, is let this a whole new topic yeah, now? Yeah, let me try to understand. For me, Bollywood is, is the industry that was made um, predominantly are films made in Mumbai. And they're different because they have a little bit more of an escapism to them. And they center more on familial uh, dynamics, uh, music and dancing. They stray away from getting too much I mean you, you continue for me I don't know that's well, how no, I define no, Bollywood no, 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 don't make me get started well, that's, on that that's not a, that's not a bad definition but the, the term the, <laughs> the term Bollywood is obviously sort of it's a borrowed term and it's and many filmmakers in India take offense of that and you know rightly so uh, you know Indian popular cinema is maybe a better way of putting at it I mean you know I mean, it's, it's, so now because it's Hollywood as sort of the predominant industry in the world so everything starts to get defined by Tollywood and Nollywood and, and Bollywood and all that so anyways um, you're right in terms of it's a certain genre definitely mm -hmm. it's a certain genre which has certain <clears throat> aesthetic principles mm -hmm. that most films follow in terms of like you mentioned song and dance and family relationships and boy meets girl and and, and uh, it wasn't all like that though there were a lot of films that were like your film but there are that they, exposed they, social reforms no, you know there are i mean they, they were. still there are mm -hmm. you know in indian popular cinema there are, there is all kind of films that mm -hmm. come out of uh, come out of the industry <clears throat> so what was your question my question was the Ashwatch films. You think that in the beginning, so yeah. I want to see that similar that Beca because connection. Because they, you know, they allowed us to use uh, very generously. They allowed us to use a, a clip in the film that you see. Uh, okay, I know which one you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. So okay. And now, did you get some sort of reactions though from Bollywood stars? I believe maybe Amir Khan. Did he say anything about the film because he's an activist himself? Or not, not, not yet. Not yet. I think okay. maybe it's not on his radar yet. Uh, okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, but hopefully soon. Yeah, but recently about uh, I I don't know what he would have to say about the censorship issue. But recently, you know, there was a AIB roast thing that happened in India. I think everybody's aware of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> the popular commentary was that uh, we should not offend people. Right. 
uh, that came from Amir Khan. But uh, I mean, there is uh, in my mind there is no freedom of speech if we cannot offend people. Mm -hmm. What is what is freedom of speech if mm -hmm. if if it's not absolute? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what his take on on the film would be. But you know, uh, censorship is wrong. Uh, yeah. There should not be any censorship. Uh, and I think India is is progressive enough to to tell the moral authorities in India that uh, these are the kind of things that we would not accept. But um, but it it doesn't seem like that there is a unified uh, voice. Uh, there is a unified fight mm -hmm. uh, in the in the country at this point of mm -hmm. time to 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 tell um, censor censor board and censor authorities to go to hell. You know, it's right. not yet. <clears throat> it's just so ironic because I feel that India is progressing in terms of the way the younger generation is kind of rising up. They're accepting the change. I mean, more people are coming out, you know, to their parents. <coughs> Yet the censor board is just still so backwards thinking. I mean, why can't they see that change is happening and it's the 21st century? Why are they still so resistant on their ways? Because that's their job. Their job is to be resistant. Their job is to... To control their job is to keep uh, keep the agenda of public discourse within a certain certain uh, agenda that fits fits with their politics and mm -hmm. their moral ideology. Mm -hmm. So to expect that somehow Indian censor board is going to sort of uh, enlighten itself is 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 uh, is something we should not even look at. What we should look at that there is an institution that mm -hmm. just should not exist at all. Mm -hmm. There is an institution that need to be thrown in garbage. Mm -hmm. That's what we need to say because if, if the job of the institution is to control, is to censor, right. then how are you going to expect them not to do that but anything else? Right, you're they, right. They, their job should only be to certify and, and move on. Their job is to tell the country right. that this film belongs to, let's say, this category. Right. I mean, they can even say that, okay, this film is really, really bad. I'm giving it a, uh, I'm giving it a category that common people should maybe not go watch mm -hmm. it. But then let people decide if they wanna, mm -hmm. if they wanna go see it or Completely. not. But, yeah. Well, talking about your film, which <clears throat> is, you know, it's dealing with that issue right now. Why? Why is the censorship not? They're not allowing this film to be shown, precisely, and you know. And I, not, in a nutshell, I mean. I, I think my analysis of this is, I mean, it's been talked about that the question is sex and violence, but I, I don't think that's the question. I mean, mm -hmm. we see sex and violence in our popular media all the time. Right. And too much of it, uh, excessive. I mean, I, I don't even think my film has that much sex and violence the way we see in our uh, in, in Indian popular films, if you want to say Forget so. I mean, film, in what, what we hear in the media, yeah, exactly. which is actually happening. Yes, you know? all the time. Uh, I think the problem is when you mix sex and violence with religion and politics and when we try to hit something mm -hmm. uh, that that's, that can strike chord with, with, with common people in terms of its truth, that's when it just becomes, you know, something that they cannot digest. And I think that's what the problem uh, is mm -hmm. with the film, so. When you were making this film though, before this even happened, <coughs> what kind of conversation did you want people, what, did you want to stir amongst the people or maybe change some sort of perception in a big or small way while you were making the film? I, I really did not go about my process like that. I, mm -hmm. I never thought that, you know, this is what people should take out of it and this is what I'm going to do. Or, but you or wanted to send a message <clears throat> in some way. Every filmmaker, I think, has some sort of message, whether it's from your past experience or from what you've heard. You want to you want to say something and you said it. So you say it. I don't know if you want to send a message. Though Another interesting thing, just on a side note, the censor board in their letter says that the film has no message. So that's the kind of absurdity we're dealing with. That but is absurdity. Yeah. So so anyway, so now uh, uh, Look, I was I was trying to tell a story that shows a certain truth of the world we live in. And that's where I wanted to stop. And I mm -hmm. think in my filmmaking with this film, I have just stopped there. I did not go any further in terms of thinking that, you know, this is what audience will take. I, I wanted to create an experience of a certain truth of our society. And I did that and I wanted to leave it that. And then I just wanted the audience can hopefully question right. that why why so mm -hmm. and why what has been shown to them the way it has been shown to them mm -hmm. why so and I, I was just hoping for that question I, I i didn't have any other any other goals in mind what were the reactions so far of this film i mean i understand that you show it <clears throat> did have a private screening in bombay and also yeah. kerala yeah what did the people say to it it's it's so interesting i have faced more resistance 
uh, in terms of the what the film is trying to show from the audience in outside of India. So two screenings that happened in India, mm. the IIT students and at IFFK. Right. This, the youth of this country, uh, you know, our, our country is completely, completely in love and passionate about what the film is trying to mm-hmm. to achieve. And they want to engage with those questions. They want to discuss that. They want to have conversations about it. Maybe they want to deal with it in terms of they want to change mm-hmm. uh, things around them. Uh, <clears throat> Not so much outside, uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, look, e- even in India, I mean, I, I knew that when I was you know, making this film, it's, it's going to divide the audience. You know, oh, I, I knew that, that either people will completely fall in love with it or right. they'll completely, completely hate it. Right. And, and, uh, you know, after, after people have seen the film, that's, that has been the story. And, mm. you know, I, 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 I feel good about that. I, yeah. I, f- I feel that the film impacts the audience in in a way i mean and if if that's that's the only job as a filmmaker yeah. i guess we have is is to create an experience that sort of really really impacts people mm-hmm. so um yeah, I think some some people are hating it and some people are just loving it. Well, that stirs a debate and that just stirs more awareness for the film. So, it's, <clears throat> you're, again, you're exposing the brutal truth of what has happened and what is still happening that not everyone is aware of. In terms of the actual film, getting the cast together, how was that like? Did you always um, envision the you know Victor Banerjee and Preeti Gupta, all those cast members, to be working in the film, or did you approach different actors before? And- <laughs> no, I no uh, Victor, that was not first choice, and I, I'm I'm glad that I failed. Yeah, and everything happens to, for a reason, right? <laughs> I, I got him to do the film. Uh, um, most actors, you know, they, they, were, they were not like the f- the first people that I, I you know, went went out to meet. I mean, <clears throat> look, even in terms of actors, like the, the, the first slightly popular actor, I mean, Victor Dye is popular enough, but mm-hmm. I, I approached an actor who was, who had much more uh, sort of, what should I say, uh, selling power to the studios if if I was, you know, making Are you this not film. allowed to say who it was? No, I, I don't want to because yeah. I'm going to tell you what, what, he, what he said. So, um, you know, I, I took the script and he really loved it. He yeah. wanted to work on the film mm-hmm. and, then, and then he said that, you know, the, the film is quite sexual and violent and why do you have to do it this way? <clears throat> right. Why can't you do it that way? So <clears throat> I, I, like a good student of cinema, spend like half an hour also trying to uh, talk to him about Stan Brackage and, and experimental <laughs> cinema and let's open our eyes to cinema in a different way and all that but I didn't succeed Interesting. and 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 you know he didn't he didn't want to do it any other way so and when Victor Da read the script he just made a phone call so I'm, I'm on it mm-hmm. when do you when do you want to do it right. so um, uh, completely different reactions right same like your audience and same like different kind of filmmakers it and all that so so no it was it it was it was an interesting experience uh, casting mm-hmm. uh, the the film uh, you know victor the adil hussain mm-hmm. did an amazing job a great professional actors um, yeah all of them yeah all of them they um, really did a good Bhanu job. was you know it was it was a great find you know mm-hmm. and and especially uh, the actresses you know it was it was so tough to look when you go to Bombay and you 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 tell you know actresses that you know this is this is what the film is and it has nudity and all that and <clears throat> you'll find a lot of actresses who are ready to go naked on on camera you'll also find uh, um, but they don't know how to act right mm. you'll also find lots of good actresses who just don't want to go that right. direction because you know uh, uh, Indian films work a certain way and, right. and it, it means something for their career. Mm-hmm. It, it needs a special courage um, in, in an actor and, and a belief also in, in the director and yes. the kind of film it is to, to, to go that far. And, you know, uh, hats off to both of them that, mm-hmm. you know, that they went, they went that far and, and I was able to, you know, find them. It, it, was, it was a long, long, I mean, it's like we did auditions over a period of two years and and, 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 really? and, and and you know three times and failed and never found an actress and and, and it was it was not easy oh my gosh wow yeah well what they had to portray what they had to kind of go through in the film <coughs> i mean it would take someone that long to do it right so well hats off to them they did an amazing job they did a spectacular yeah. job did any of the cast members or anyone just outside maybe in your family maybe amongst your friends were they like amit this isn't going to be shown in India. What are you doing? You know, did any of that discussion come about while you were making it that this could be censored? 
or did you not even think about that? You just wanted to make this film and. Well, my family didn't even know that I was making a movie. Oh, but well, uh, hello, Amit's family. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they recently found out. <laughs> oh my uh, gosh! But um, but um, look, in terms of. Uh, what are we doing and this this will have problem every step of the way everybody you know including the actors and everybody was you know and part of the reason they also wanted to do it because of that because they they said this was this is a we you know we need to we need to push mm -hmm. uh, the boundaries mm -hmm. here um so yeah i face that i face that all along regarding did it did i did i think that it will be censored you know i I knew the way I was making it, it will have challenges. I knew censor board is just not going to have a like, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but I knew they were going to come up with certain cuts and we'll have problem. And <clears throat> I look at what that is. And right. first of all, I'm not one of those filmmakers. I mean, we, 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 we need to have you know, complete freedom of expression. What is this yeah. thing? I mean, censor board is not making a film for us. Are, are they? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are filmmakers. We make films. So that's, that's how it should be. Uh, but, you know, I really, really never thought that they, that we really have gone that regressive and that, that backwards that yeah, I know. we, the, uh, they will outrightly ban the film. Right. And not because of, not because of nudity, not because of the sexual expression, but because of the ideas that are expressed in the film. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's it's one thing. It's one thing when, you know, it's just it's just about nudity and and, and you you fight with that in a different way and you you but it's it's completely another thing when yeah. there's there's just these important ideas, questions, the reality of India that needs to be expressed and you you you, you just want to ban it. It's just mm -hmm. wrong. I mean, also the latest um, documentary that BBC made, India's Daughter, yeah. that was also banned because... Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a phenomenon. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It's just not a problem with Unfreedom the movie. It's, it's Unfreedom the movement. It's, it, yeah, it is, the it, movement, you're right. Yes, it is. It is we are facing more, more and more filmmakers are facing it. More and more writers are facing it. And it's just, just also not in India. I mean, we see this phenomenon around the world. We, it, this, is, this is a streak of fundamentalist... Uh, world that mm -hmm. we are becoming on the other hand we are one hand we are saying we are becoming a very liberal world but that's kind of not true it's it's a it's a marriage of autocratic capitalism that is happening with fundamentalism and that's i think that's what we're looking at but here's the irony your film everyone's going to see your film with the advancement of technology and internet I it's, hope so. Everyone's eyes are going to be on <laughs> well, that. That's film why I'm anyway. here to promote. I mean, <laughs> right? You're here to promote, and you are you're getting everyone to sign a petition to bring to Modi, the Prime Minister of India, correct? Right. And you're trying to crowdfund money so that uh, certain people can see it in India. And it's going to be released on digitally. Well, let's so let's speak about that. You, you need to tell your audience. So yeah, people, sorry, I'm giving you all the options. Now uh, we're going to go break yeah, them down. Yeah, we need so. to go. Uh, your audience need to go on freedommovie.com. Yes, they'll find on homepage there is a petition where they can click. It mm -hmm. will take them to the petition. They can sign the petition. So we want as many signatures for that petition as possible. And this is just not for India. Everybody yeah. around the world who believes in freedom of expression mm -hmm. should sign this petition. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. Um, uh, the, the second is yes you can go on the website and you can contribute towards taking the film in India because now as they have banned it we cannot have a public screening where we we charge for the film we cannot right. do that but we can do private screenings private invite only screenings right. where we do not charge for admission mm -hmm. and so that can only happen with help and support of everybody so we're starting that in Bombay and we're going to keep going and going to different different cities okay. as much support we get okay. and and you know we already had a, I mean the the, the do you have two, the exact figures? Of two, two screenings that we did uh -huh. uh, with, uh, I mean, it was amazing response. So, so I, I, I definitely think people want to watch it. Uh, Completely. So, yeah, yeah. Good, good. Okay, yeah. well, we have to keep urging the audience to do that. Um, you said freedom.com, right? Unfreedom. Unfreedommovie.com. Unfreedommovie.com, where you can sign the petition. Yes. Um, great. And also, I just kind of want to talk about the process of you um, trying to get it passed for, by the censorship board. You tried to approach three committees and I believe one <clears throat> said it could be shown unless you have a lot of cuts to your movie right and the other two just completely said no right no so 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 people need to understand the process of censorship in India so there is a censor board uh, I need to understand too so yeah so there's there's a first committee in the censor board that sees the film mm -hmm. <clears throat> so th their recommendation was 
we cannot certify this film. Right. Then you are allowed to go to a revising committee. Right. So a revising committee saw the film and then they gave me a list of cuts. A very absurd cuts. I, I I don't want to announce those cuts right now because people still have to see the film. Oh yeah. But they were they were as absurd cuts that I would not be left with any expression in terms of what I'm what right. I'm making. Right. Um so I I did not accept those and then I there is a there is a tribunal that you go to after uh, after that it's called FCAT which which falls under the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting in India. Mm-hmm. Now when they saw the film uh, and because that is a government body and because we understand the kind of government we're dealing with at this point of time in terms of its uh, fundamentalists right. and, and certain you know moral ethics and whatnot uh, they overruled the revising committee decision and said we will uphold the examining committee decision that this film cannot be certified because if this film is certified Mm -hmm. Hindus and Muslims will kill each other it will ignite unnatural passions this film this film has no message and whatnot so so they refused uh, certification and so now we're going to high court right Uh, and if we don't get a good decision uh, from high court we go to Supreme Court, okay, and then don't know what. But but we need to we need to keep this fight on uh, mm-hmm. because also through your audience, I want to I want to tell everybody yeah. that we need to understand that in actuality the the way censor board is operating mm-hmm. it's operating unconstitutionally it's operating in ways illegally right uh, the the act the way it defines that you cannot curtail the freedom of speech the they are operating against it they are they are using guidelines mm-hmm. which which goes against the freedom of speech the way it is written in our own constitution right. so uh, so everybody needs to be aware aware of it and and sort of um, speak against it do you have how are you how are you going continuing with this what what are you telling yourself each day when you wake up i mean do you have hope do you have positivity do you think that things will change i mean because this is going beyond your film like you said this is a bigger issue it's the bigger issue of freedom of speech and your rights in india as an individual yeah i guess i guess you better just live in here and now and mm-hmm. and you in that here and now you you see what is in front of you and you see what is the right thing to do and you you see what is the important fight to fight and right. you just go with it. Um, you, you know, I you just you just cannot be pessimistic about no. if 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 this would turn out uh, the, the the wrong way. What you what you feel is that this is the right thing to do right now. Right. And I think that's that's what keeps you going. Completely. I actually kind of wanted to just go back to the film a little bit about the symbolism because that's the one thing I wanted to talk to you about because that was just really interesting. I mean, I don't want to give it all away, but there were just certain, uh, I'll, I don't if, like for example, you you had a scene of like a British soldier, which which is which was interesting. And then I think my favorite symbolism was when you used the movie DDLJ, the Valley of the Jenga, just because at least in my eyes, <clears throat> it showed that things are not a happy ending. You don't. It's, there's not a Bollywood happy ending to all these films, just the way Bollywood makes it. Right. And, and but th- but this girl, the character uh, Leela, yeah. she had hope. She had optimism that maybe maybe she didn't have hope. Right. But the fact that she watched that movie and she had Shah Rukh Khan as her background, what was the bigger meaning behind that? It was it was just not take on Bollywood in terms of that. It was just not question of hope and and you know how how every popular film will has, uh, a, happy uh, ending, yeah, has yeah. a happy ending. But it it was also about sort of the comparison of heterosexuality and homosexuality Mm -hmm. so it's it's always a head you know a father you know giving away uh, his daughter uh, uh, in in a heterosexual marriage is sort of is that's also the kind of Indian popular cinema creates that kind of a norm Mm -hmm. a normative and what becomes natural is always naturalized right uh, in society so there was definitely a statement on that over there and then also relationship in in the same way you know there was a, a certain relationship with patriarchy that was being set uh, I mean you, relationship the, with DDLJ and how it is in the film yes. you know it's the same way same way like Simran in DDLJ is the expectations of Leela with her yeah. father and yeah. belief in the father and you know she's she's a god-fearing god-loving girl right. you know and and, and uh, so all those sort of relationships were there but but she happened to be a 
but she doesn't happen to be a lesbian, but she's a lesbian. She's a lesbian, yeah. She's exactly. a lesbian. And, it and, makes and, it even harder yeah, for the father to yeah, accept in, during yeah, that time yeah, in, right, in right, India. Right. <clears throat> but, but you mentioned the patriarchal aspect, and I actually questioned myself during the movie. I go, where is Leela's mother? Why does she have no say in any of this decision-making? It's because she, she, she can't have a say. Is that correct? Did you want to do mostly the father influence? Because you used it also in the other story with um, the Muslim scholar. That was also like uh, Hussein's past. He was the reason he acted the way he acted was because of his father. So was there like a meaning behind using the father as a symbol of powerful against powerless or right? No, I mean there is there is definitely a study of patriarchy fathers um, in the film. You know, yeah. in both sides of the story, right? Right, and like you mentioned about uh, Leela's mother. Uh, um, you know, patriarchy operates uh, with with uh, women's will in a certain way. You know, patriarchy is not something that's just enforced only through men. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's enforced only with women's consent as well. You know, as much as so. Um, so that's definitely a, a statement there. Uh, and yes, you know, the, the father-son relationship and, and father-son or father-daughter relationship. So that, that relationship between generations mm -hmm. is, is, is definitely crucial right. uh, to the structure of narrative on both sides of the story. And, and also sort of the continuation of the cycle with that is, is, was, 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 was crucial. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> um, now, kind of what... I literally just like lost track of what I was going to say, actually. I can go back, keep talking about father if that's the case. No, the inspiration <laughs> behind the film, it was it was based on a poem as yeah. well, yes. right? Yes. But I'm sure it was also based on your uh, witness and your experience too, just growing up in... Right, the, the kind of poems also read is something that speaks to us, isn't it? Well, Faz Ahmed Faz is, a, is, is, a, is an amazing, uh, famous uh, uh, writer and poet. Right. And, and very political um poet you know um, and so his his poem yadag da gujala ye shab gazida seher was definitely an inspiration and he was writing that poem at the eve of indian independence when we are on one hand we are getting free other hand hindus and muslims are killing each other right <clears throat> so and the transliteration of the poem is also dawn, dawn of unfreedom okay um uh, now yes growing up i have seen religious violence in india very brutal first hand i uh, you know i've had um, homosexual friends in india who have faced brutal violence uh, rape uh, and uh, so you know obviously i've i've taken things from my 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 personal experience and and what i have seen in life and and uh, where and what my understanding of the world is mm -hmm. and what my understanding of life is yes what's next What's next now for, for the film and, and, and for you as well? The next is May 29th. Everybody should see the film and as many people should see the film and love the film and, and make sure that we can take this film, you know, everywhere in India. We, sh we, we should take this film around the world. Mm -hmm. So that's next. I mean, the, the mission stays with the film still. The end mission stays with fight against censorship. So that's, that is uh, still very, very, very important. But you're also coming out with a couple of new films. Are, are you in the process of making? Or? Yes, no I'm, no, I'm in the process of sort of finishing my, my, my script. And uh, Black Boots is a story which is of first black Marines who went to World War II. Oh, wow. Um, they went to segregated boot camps. Their stories was never told. You've heard of Tuskegee Airmen, Buffalo Soldiers, but it never was told. Never, never. 2012, they received a Congressional Gold Medal. Uh, so the first time sort of the, 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 the story, you know, became uh, more known uh, to people in America. So it's it's a story of courage, racism, and unfreedom. Hmm. Um, and so that's one. And the second one um, I'm finishing is Ayodhya. So if that means anything. I don't know. Do you know what Ayodhya would mean for you? I mean, it's just like 1992. How old are you? 23, turning 24 soon. I shouldn't, I shouldn't ask that. One. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm legal, so it's okay in, in many <laughs> different it's, ways. It's like, so, so 90, what is, 92, oh. you, you must be like a little kid. Um, yeah. A 92 uh, Babri Mosque uh, was demolished 
in uh, Ayodhya. Ayodhya is the city. Uh, and this was a wave of Hindu fundamentalism in India that really caught fire for the very first time. Before hmm. that, India was more and more of a secular country, which, I mean, in, 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 in minds of common people, we still are very secular people. But that's when the polity shifted in, in, in the country and, and sort of we, we, we got into this wave of Hindu fundamentalism in India. So Ayodhya is, is going to be a Shakespearean drama oh, wow. set in the contemporary politics of 1992 Ayodhya. That is very exciting. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. But kind of one last question before we wrap <clears throat> up, because do you believe, I don't, I don't want to bring up a religion topic because I will just start too much controversy yeah. on this popcorn talk network. But I, in your <laughs> opinion though, I mean, is Hinduism a religion? It's more a spirituality, don't you think? I mean, you're mentioning, you know, Hindu fundamental, I can't even say the word, fundamentalism, oh. but to me, I just have always felt that the people of India are, are have a more peaceful nature to them, and then they don't use religion. Like you said, I mean, it used to be secular, but I feel like it's still kind of the case where they don't have religion or anything dominate their decisions and their thinking. I'm glad there are people like you. I'm, I'm <laughs> happy. I'm happy to hear that, and I I wish there are more and more of just like that. I uh, thought there were. It's like <laughs> well, I'm so naive sometimes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, the, not really, not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I will continue to not use any religion or anything to dominate me. It's just my spirituality. We, we need to I have. Mean, there's we, some people here who who we, use yoga and meditation no, as their need, religion. So. We need to have pop talks about fundamental <laughs> fundamentalism. That's what we should do. Uh, we should have pop talks about uh, ISIS. Oh God, yeah. We should have pop talks about honestly. Uh, fun, no, why not? I mean, are we scared of that? We shouldn't be scared because we shouldn't be scared as a younger generation, I'm speaking to myself. We need to be aware of everything that's happening, not right. only in America but outside of America, because it might hit us later, sooner or later. Right. That's all I have to say. Yes, to that. and unless unless we continue talking and fighting against it, this this you know when they want to st stop you uh, by killing two here, four there, and you stop that's when you give in and that's when you give them power and you give them force so yeah. that, that shouldn't happen that's very true that's very true Amit thank you thank you is there anything you want to say that I didn't mention I, that I, you want to just tell the people or I, I didn't come with any agenda I, I think you have asked all the right questions no 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 not an agenda just no. like a last what I'm, I'm gonna tell for him that to see the film to get part of the involved in the movement and definitely check out unfreedom move me unfreedom movie dot com, dot com I think so to and just learn more about it, you know? Let, let, let me see. My, my social media team always, always asks me that I, I always uh, screw up with this. So there is a Facebook page. Okay. So there's a Facebook on Freedom Movie. Okay. We should go there. There's a Twitter page okay, on Freedom, Freedom Movie. People should go there. And again, once again, on freedommovie.com, sign the petition. And it's opening, it's opening on all the VOD platforms. So 29th May, you can... You can uh, you can decide the fate of this movie. Interesting. We'll wait until then. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Popcorn Talks Bollywood. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. You learned a little bit more about the Unfreedom movie movement. I'm your host, Kanika Lal. You can follow me on Twitter at Kanika Lal and on Instagram at You Can Have It Lal. And where can they follow you, Amit, on Twitter and or Instagram? How can you follow me? Yeah, on tw you have a Twitter yeah, account. I, I, I followed you today. So. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll follow you back. Thanks. All so right. what is it? Tell, tell the people. <laughs> what? Oh, it must be, it must be Raj Amit Kumar. I don't. It think must, it be, it must I, be. I don't. Raj I don't follow that. Don't I, I don't follow my own Twitter account that okay, much. Okay, follow I, me I, I, and look at my followers. <laughs> as Raj Amit Kumar. Right. Thank you guys so much, and see you next time. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 